Hi everyone. Today we're going to be looking at the SS Nomadic, Titanic's little sister by Philippe Delanoy. Now let's get one thing absolutely clear. It is not Titanic's little sister. This cutesy title is factually inaccurate. The Nomadic is a tender, the Titanic is an ocean liner. Yes, both ships were built in Belfast. Yes, both ships used the same steel. Yes, they're both owned and managed by the White Star Line. But that's it. You cannot compare the two. A far more accurate title would have been SS Nomadic Titanic's Tender or SS Nomadic Last Surviving White Star Line Ship. But rant aside, let's just focus on the ship and the book. So, the Nomadic was built in 1911 to service the next generation of White Star Line ships, which at the time would have been the Olympic class liners. Olympic, Titanic, and Lally, the Britannic. Based in the French port of Cherbourg, the Nomadic was one of two new tenders, the other one being the Traffic. And the Traffic was built to service the third-class passengers as well as the first-class luggage, while the Nomadic handled the first-class passengers and the second-class passengers, although there was a lounge for some third-class passengers. But still, the bulk was first and second class. Anyway. The Nomadic handled and tendered any White Star liner that visited the port. It would basically take passengers from the port out to the ship and then any disembarking passengers would board the Nomadic and come back to the port. It did this right through until the 1930s when the Great Depression forced a reorganization of shipping and the Nomadic as well as the five other tenders in Cherbourg were all pulled together into one company and then serviced any visiting liner. Now renamed the Engineer Minard, the Nomadic continued to be a tender right through into the 1960s, and then it was sold off to become a floating restaurant on the River Seine. After this, it was brought back to Belfast and fully restored to its 1911 appearance, and it is now part of the Titanic Quarter in Belfast, where all the lucky people that visited it can walk on the decks of the last surviving White Star Line ship and step on the same decks that famous passengers from the Titanic once did. Now, to talk about this book. It's a wonderful companion piece for anyone who's visited the ship or who's interested in White Star Line ships in general, ocean liners, and tenders. And on the note of tenders, in the UK there is another one that is undergoing preservation and it's hanging by an absolute thread. This is the Calshot in the port of Southampton. I've included a link below for those who are interested in learning more about that ship and who want to contribute to the preservation of that also very very interesting vessel. But back to the book. It is lavishly illustrated. What you can see here are models used for the 1997 James Cameron movie Plenty of photos of Cherbourg, of passengers and crew. Here you can see one of the crew boxes that include biographies of several of the crew, which is a great touch and gives an added dimension to the life of the nomadic, life on board. And you can see here more shots of the tender. Clearly this book is lavishly illustrated, and there's hundreds of photos to peruse, but what I particularly enjoy are in these colour sections. So you've got diagrams of the nomadic, you also have schematics showing the ship's changes in appearance, and if I can find it, these beautiful renderings showing how it was used as a minesweeper during the First World War. So, in addition for accounting the life of the ship, being lavishly illustrated, at the very back of the book there is an appendix that includes a list of all known passengers that were ferried to the Titanic on the Nomadic. You will see some familiar names, such as the Astors and Duff Gordons, and the unfortunate maritime artist Samuel Ward Stanton. Now, for a relatively small book, it packs a lot of information and it is wonderfully illustrated. Plenty of Good quality photos have been included in this book, 
and the additional renderings are an added bonus. Aside from the absolutely ridiculous and historically inaccurate subtitle, which should never have been put in, but again, right aside, aside from all of that, this book is a solid 4 out of 5 captain's hats, and it is great light reading and a worthy addition to anyone who's interested in the White Star Line. And that, ladies and gentlemen, brings that review of The Nomadic Tender to a conclusion. I hope you found it interesting and entertaining. And if you'd like to learn more about some of my other reviews, please check out the videos below. Don't forget as well to hit that subscribe button to be alerted for all the upcoming new reviews that come out every Wednesday. If there's a book about a specific ship that you'd like me to review, please let me know in the comments below. And until the next time, enjoy and happy reading!